Good afternoon. So you're not the only AI company here. I think there's 623. I lost track. Is that all? Yeah. What, what makes you different? Start with the elevator pitch. Well, so first, uh, it's great that there's so many AI companies here. The whole ecosystem is out here in, in, in Doha, and it's great to see. Um, we're a little bit different in that we make chips and systems and servers and computers optimized for accelerating AI work. And to that end, we build the largest chip in the history of the compute industry. And I, I brought one. Show and tell, Tom. Um, th this is our, our chip. This is the largest chip ever built. It's called the Wafer Scale Engine. It's about 57 times larger than a graphics processing engine. It replaces somewhere between 60 or 80 different GPUs. And it does work 70 times faster at a tiny fraction of the power draw. So that's a little bit about how we're different. So what was the big insight then? I'm, I'm sure you've had a lot of competition. Everyone wants to make AI faster, cheaper, use less power. Yeah, you, you know, the, the VCs very rarely get a, a pitch that says, we want to be slower, use more power. Um, that's sort of not what they see. AI work is comprised of, of two different fundamental components at the compute level. The calculation and the moving of the data, the moving of the intermediate results. And it turns out that the movement of this intermediate result takes up a huge portion of the time. By building a, a very big chip, we were able to keep that work in an extremely efficient domain, keep it on the chip where it moves more quickly and uses less power. That's the essence of the advantage. OK. So let's talk about some of the use cases you've had for this. You've got an interesting set of clients that you know. there's this image of AI sometimes. It's the chat bot on the web, although there is one you can try out on Cerebrus's site. Uh, let's talk about some of the uses, this, the problems we're trying to solve here. Sure, I, I, I think. I mean, all of you and, and your customers are, are benefiting from, from what we can do in, in AI, but our company has done some work in, in personalized medicine with Mayo Clinic. They're one of our largest customers. And there we were able to train a, a foundation model for genomics. And it's able to predict which drug is most likely to be effective for rheumatoid arthritis for example. Uh, we've done work with uh, GlaxoSmithKline, the leading pharmaceutical company, to identify drug targets. We've done work with Total Energies in identifying where uh, high probability oil might be uh, in the earth. Uh, we've done work for the US government in identifying the behavior of materials over time. Just a few uh, of the examples. You can use us every day if you use Perplexity. Uh, their search is uh, powered by us, or Mistral. Their, their chat is powered by us. Just a few of the, the different ways you can use us. And you're, since you're a hardware maker, we're talking about running pretty much any model you want on this. That's right. We, we build the hardware, and we roll it into the data center. And you can write your models to us if you're model writers in PyTorch. You can run private models. You can run open source models. You can run any type of model you'd like. Yeah, if you go to their website, you can try out the chatbot. You can try DeepSeek or Llama. I did test that. Uh, it looks like Llama has a better acquaintance with the Doha Metro. It gave correct directions <laughs> to get from the airport to here. DeepSeek right. gets to work on that. All right, don't, don't, don't go to the, uh, the, the, the Chinese models for restaurant recommendations in Doha. OK. Yes. So what is your take on this competition? We have DeepSeek has upended a lot of things. There's this whole debate, completely closed models, open weight models, or open source models, where it's not just the data that went into it, but the actual code. Where do you see this shaking out? Look, I, I think we're still really early in, in, in the AI, in the development of the AI ecosystem. And when you're early in the development of an ecosystem, you, you have lots of different permutations. I, I think what we will see over time is a collection of closed source models that are extremely good 
and a collection of, of open source models that are used frequently. Um, and so I think they will coexist, just like today Red Hat coexists with uh, the collection of different open source OSs. You also have a model of your own, the uh, reasoning framework model called Cerebrus Planning and Optimization, or CEPO. Yes. We, we, we do have a, a passion for Star Wars, it's true. Who uh -huh. among us does not, really? Right. So, uh, you were describing this to me before as a reasoning framework. What makes, what's the actual difference in practice? What's the, how does that give you a different, presumably better output? So as you guys know, there are different types of models, and one of the, 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 the sexiest, one of the most interesting types right now are called reasoning models. And, and these are models that can actually go step by step in working through a problem. Now they use more inference time compute to do that, but the results are more accurate. And uh, O1 from uh, OpenAI is such a model. Uh, DeepSeek is such a model, and, and we put one into the open source community, a framework that would allow anybody to take their model and add this reasoning component to it. Now, it, it's a powerful thing, and, and we, we encourage you guys to try it. And so let's circle back to the whole speed approach. You were talking about how fast this thing can go through. Is this a model which you wrote to take advantage of that, to show it off? This was a model we wrote to take advantage of, of reasoning in general. You know, we are uh, 70, 80 times faster than the next nearest competitor in inference. And these, these reasoning models take a little more time. They give you a better answer as a result. So by making them faster, you get the benefit of really fast res response plus really accurate answers. And that, that we think is the holy grail. Changing the speed versus accuracy that's right. equation. So let's talk about power consumption, since that's certainly a big concern. I, I know in the US, I'm from Northern Virginia, which is the data center capital of the world. There's a lot of concern over how much electricity is going into these things. To what extent is hardware like yours can we solve that problem, given that this is such a distributed industry? You did a talk at Fortune Brainstorm earlier where you made the point that as you get things more efficient, you still need a data center somewhere, even no matter how much stuff is being done on device. Yeah, look, look I think power is, a, is an industry-wide challenge. Um, I think our system uses order half the power to generate a unit of compute than a, a GPU does. But I, I, I don't think we can just put a period here, right? Our industry is growing so quickly and we're using so much power in our data centers that we all have to, to, to work together as an ecosystem. There's opportunities for software to be more efficient, right? To drive up the utilization. Uh, there's opportunity for the components, the fans, the power supplies, et cetera, to be more efficient. In, in the server system. And then there's an opportunity for us and for, for uh, our colleagues in, in, other in, in other companies to, to build more efficient processors. All of those need to happen for us to come together to, to make some progress on this challenge. I, I assume we have at least a few developers in this audience. Do, do you want to offer any suggestions about things we should be looking to do to make that, the coding end of it more efficient? Well, yeah. <laughs> Software guys don't like to take advice from hardware guys, so I, I, I think take, take it with a, a grain of salt. I, I think um, the, the way to write more efficient code is to write lower level code, is uh, to write more efficient code, and that's almost always closer to the hardware. That's microcode, that's C, that's C++. Some of the least efficient code you can write is, is Python. Um, on the other hand, uh, Python is the easiest, and one can sure rip out features quickly with Python. So as we think about uh, building more efficient AI, it will mean uh, working on the libraries, the underlying libraries, working uh, at, the, at the lowest level uh, of the code. And th that's how you get faster, and that's how you use less power. So th this is an industry, I'm thinking back to how much time did we spend talking about AI at Web Summit, say, uh, 2019, the last one pre-pandemic. It feels like 10 years ago. And it was really not on the roadmap. So much has changed in the last two, three months. 
DeepSeek has come out of nowhere to be this topic A. What's your sense of the, the sort of next big unknown thing? What, what, are the, what are the areas where you're thinking the next big disruption is going to happen, whether it's policy or regulatory or competitive or economic? Well, I, I, I think OpenAI is going to drop GPT-5, and it's, it's going to be awesome. I, I think we're going to see more models from more places. I, I think that, that people were surprised by DeepSeek as a mistake. It's like we, we forgot that, that they're good engineers in China, they're good universities, they also can do good work, they can read the same papers, Absolutely. they can take the, the open source work that, that's in the community. Um, and, and so we shouldn't have been surprised. I think we will see other good models from other places around the world, uh, in, including Qatar, other parts of the Middle East, in India, um, in Singapore, we will see other extraordinary models. But in the next three to six months, I think you'll see uh, OpenAI drop uh, ChatGPT5, and I think it'll be a big step forward. And in terms of the real world benefits, you were talking earlier about medical development, life sciences companies, energy. When do you think we start seeing those spin-offs? I know it is a much longer process. So I, I think it's important, there's a lot of discussion of AI where it's, oh, it's the chatbot on the web that lies to you. Right. And it, it's fun and it's certainly, I've had interesting things said about my career by various AI chatbots that I will not name, not from your company. Um, but people need to see some upside of this. Yeah, I, look, I, I, I think um, I think it was probably uh, somewhere in Q4 of last year where I think AI began to make a, a shift from novelty to useful. And I, I think this year, uh, if we are not delivering significant value uh, to, 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 the, to the world w with our AI, um, I, I think we will have pulled up short a, as an industry. I think the opportunities in personalized medicine are large, in material sciences are large. I think in uh, chat is itself is, is probably not the most productive, but in looking after the elderly and in providing assistance to the elderly, um, I think you know, my, my elderly mother-in-law asks Alexa to play Frank Sinatra and uh, the chairman of the board. She, that's right. <laughs> and, and sometimes it plays a song she forgot she liked. And you know, if you can make your 93-year-old mother-in-law smile, right? That, that, that's a productive use of technology. So what is on Cerebrus's roadmap for the next year or so that you can talk about? Sure. I, I think when you build chips and systems, uh, you are in a, a race to, to build bigger, faster, better. And I, I think this is true for training, and this is true for inference. I, I think uh, deploy equipment around the world. Um, I think on the engineering front, we are looking to make the, the same caliber innovation we made when we made the largest chip on Earth um, in the next step, and in the next step. We're not satisfied with the fact that we are uh, so much faster today. We, we know there's work to be done, and so I, I think you'll see and hear great things from us for the rest of the year. And in terms of that speed upgrade, I mean, obviously the benefit is you're waiting less. You don't need to sacrifice quality so much to get a fast output. Are there other sort of second order, third order effects you're seeing from that? Well, a, a while ago, uh, one of Google's large thinkers, a, a man named Urs Holtz, wrote a paper where they looked at Google data. And, and what they found was that even milliseconds in delay of response affected the user's experience. I, I think as we make our models, as we make inference faster, our users will enjoy them more. They will use them more. I, I think as we make the models smarter and as they produce better results, right? Better restaurant recommendations here in, in Doha, better analysis of, of your career. Um, they're used more, they become more important, and they have a bigger role uh, and a bigger contribution in society. And um, lastly, you're going to have some time to walk the floor, I assume. What are you looking for when you look at other AI startups here? 
you know, I, I'm looking for people who, who are built or have built something and that can identify their, their customers and who are delighting their customers with their product. I, I think the, uh, the days of, of talk and, and whiteboard, uh, they're behind us. I think right now what excites me when I, when I walk a show floor are um, young people who are fired up about what they've built and its impact and have customers to, to, to back that up. And I guess my last question then, you know, you, you've been through a lot. This is a hugely dynamic industry. Is there any advice you would have given, you would like to have been able to give yourself two years ago? Right. Be, being a startup in hardware is, is not easy. I, I think the, the, the best advice is, is, is don't be dead, right? You've got to be relentless. You, you, you've got to uh, be unafraid. Um, I think we have benefited from trying to do things that, that, that other people were afraid of, right? Really big chips had been tried previously and they'd failed, um, but, but we were fearless. Um, I would recommend working with people you like and care about um, and pr pursuing your, your, your passion even when, when others are telling you it's, it's a bad idea or it's not going to work. You still have some of those emails saying this is never going to work? Oh, well, I have a file. <laughs> excellent, excellent. All right, well, I hope this has all given you something to inspire your own work and your creativity. And thank you for your time. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you.